Hello, this is Danny Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guy. Well, I produced my saltiest video ever to let loose my feelings about betrayal, about the roadmap change, and I have written a nearly salt-free description thinking positively about what should have been done differently. By the way, apparently the Star Citizen YouTube audience and algorithm much prefers the high-sodium diet when it comes to this controversy, so is there room for one more video? Yes, and that is to think about the whys and wherefores of what is causing this. But first, with extra days to analyze the situation, my thinking has shifted from what I was presuming was going on in the first most salty video. In particular, I think that the gameplay features that I speculated were being held to debut in Squadron 42 are being held to debut in 4.0. The reason for that change of thought is the realization that these features have no applicability to Squadron 42, and thus no reason to regard them as spoiling. There is also one other thing that I think people thought I said that I'd more than I did in that video, and that is that because I did not make it clear that there is a difference between core gameplay and gameplay features. Just because there's no team working on PU core gameplay does not mean that nothing can happen with gameplay features. What's the difference? Well, core gameplay would be the reputation system, and game features would be all the game activities that impact and are impacted by reputation. Core gameplay is important, though, and there's a reason why it has the status of being a pillar in development. And eventually, the gameplay feature team is going to need to have something done for it in the core gameplay system, and unless it's also applicable to Squadron 42, there's nobody asked to do it. Or maybe others are right, and adding the word exclusively was just a bad word choice. It's not as though that announcement did not have many other examples of terrible ways of saying things. Now, I have no insider information about what is going on inside CIG, and in some respects that's a good thing, because then I would be under NDA and couldn't talk about this at all, just like CIG isn't talking about this at all. CIG has both by cutting off the roadmap information pipe, and even more by having a complete blackout about any comment about the controversy they caused, has created an information vacuum. And nature abhors a vacuum, and the nature of fan and content creators particularly abhors an information vacuum. What will rush in to fill any information void is speculation, and the nature of the speculation will be formed, just like a Rorschach test, by the character of the person doing the speculation. The trusting and devoted fans created speculation that everything is perfect, and CIG was completely right, which does count as speculation, while the distrustful ones come up with the speculation that everything is chaos, which is also speculation. And we've seen both of those on Spectrum and other places. Then the folks like myself who love a good mystery will try to look for clues and peel back another layer of the puzzle, which, in all honesty, is just another form of speculation. Because there is a mystery here. You see, the four-quarter roadmap, in fact, was serving CIG very well, not despite the noise and distraction, but because of the noise and distraction. It distracted the community to be making noise about the next four quarters and not the more uncomfortable questions about when and whether there would be beta or release. So Watson, are you ready for this? Oh God, yes. The game, Mrs. Hudson, is on. A while back, I took a postgraduate set of course at UC Irvine in management practice for technical professionals in the hope of lining myself up for a promotion. It didn't work, but education is never without any payoff. One professor said that just like there are type A and type B personalities, there were type A managers who believed that employees were easily distracted and self-centered and needed close monitoring and direction when there were type B managers who believed that employees had to be motivated to consider themselves autonomous, empowered, and trusted partners in the process. I realized that the same thing also applied to companies' attitudes about their customers. You have type B customer management, which is like this. I like to teach the world to sing, sing with me. And type A customer relationship management, which is like this. I have neither the time nor the inclination to explain myself to a man who rises and sleeps under the blanket of the very freedom that I provide and then questions the manner in which I provide it. I would rather you just said thank you and went on your way. Now, the prior roadmap process was a bit of both, trying to be open, but at the same time also by saying that they would try to educate us about the software process, carrying an implication of, I have a greater responsibility than you can possibly fathom. And their actual explanations of feature changes were usually the kind of short, deliberate vagueness intended to be dismissive rather than genuinely informative. It needs polish, we need to evaluate. But even more, perhaps from an attitude that we couldn't understand or it wouldn't look good for marketing, they didn't actually do the promised education of the realities of software development, 
like the potential for cascading delays. So, for example, we have three features, all of which meet the 70% confidence threshold of being completed that was their measure of being labeled tentative. But in order to be actually working in the game, each needs the other two. Therefore, the delay of one delays all three, a cascading delay. Their actual chances of being able to be in a release? Less than 35%. So on to the mystery, Watson. What would we normally expect out of the first roadmap update of February? We would have expected two more columns be added to the chart for Q3 and Q4 releases. And what was different this year? As we continue our journey towards Pyro throughout this year. Ah, the journey to Pyro, which I am confident more than a few people at CIG heard Jared say and thought, Are we there yet? No. 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 That was their dilemma. If they added two more patches to the roadmap and didn't label one of them as 4.0, people would react with, Oh no, another whole year? We're never going to get there. However, if they added one and did label it 4.0, people would go nuts with jubilation and anticipation. They could have had a whole page of tentative warnings, and we would even understand that there was a whole page of tentative warnings, and our anticipation would still be sky high. We've had pyro and higher player counts teased for so long that it is unavoidable, as would be our unavoidable disappointment if one of the cascading delays were to delay it back from being 4.0 to being, say, 3.19. Understanding why something had to change, or even agreeing that it had to change, doesn't alter your feelings of disappointment about it. That was the thing that CIG got wrong about us. They said we didn't understand it wasn't a promise, when in fact we did understand, but that didn't change our frustration and disappointment. And make no doubt about it, there is a huge list of cross dependencies inside of 4.0. I mean, just within server meshing, you have three very complex systems the dedicated game server, the replication layer, and the entity grab database that must not only do their own jobs, but work flawlessly together. Only have two of those, and you don't have server meshing. Don't have server meshing, you don't have 4.0. And within each one of those, there are several more fine-grained cross-dependencies. So that's my speculation as to why the release view was curtailed. They couldn't not label one of the releases 4.0 without disappointing people, and they couldn't label one 4.0 without a high risk of something causing it to miss and even higher levels of disappointment. So the safest route was to simply not add long-term releases at all and take the present outrage for doing so. But that doesn't address the matter of all the cards that were dropped from 3.17 and 3.18. But I think the actual cause of that is related. I suspect that the 4.0 development branch has already been forked from 3.xx, but CIG doesn't want to announce that because of all the getting our hopes up business. The changes in the core data structure needed for the entity graph database and replication layer are too broad and fundamental to just swap them in and out as a code module from the 3.0 development branch. And in the part of the roadmap update that nobody got to because they were so upset by the start, there were three interesting deliverables added to the work assignments. First, server streaming. Changes to the implementation of server object container streaming to be driven from the network code's replication layer, backed by the entity graph for persistent storage. This task is core to server meshing and could quite possibly need a fork and development branch all on its own. Second, DGS crash recovery. When a dedicated game server crashes, this system will spin up a replacement DGS and restore its state from the replication layer. This too is a core part of server meshing, although perhaps not as directly requiring a fork and the development. Third, long-term persistence. Changes to long-term persistence that will support the new inventory and shard database. LTP functionality will stay the same, but the system will read write the data from the new entity graph database. Again, a very low level core 4.0 feature that has no foundation in the 3.x code branch. So these three features are the evidence, Watson, why I deduce that 4.0 has already been given its own development fork, because it would be hard to get too far along on these items without it. So when it came to these dropped features, I think that there was a need to decide about whether to have them integrate them and do QA for both the 3.x and 4.0 branches. And the decision was made in block to just implement them in the 4.0 development branch only. And since the 4.0 development branch is hidden, so are those features. And as you may recall, Watson, we have seen this before. It was the case of the missing 2.7. 
2.6 was released on December 23rd of 2016. It was then followed by a limited release of 2.6.1 in February, and then both 2.6.2 and 2.6.3 in, in April. And then absolutely no release for nearly nine months until 3.0 was released exactly one year after 2.6. Fan frustration during that year was so high that with 3.0, CIG committed to quarterly releases and created the expectation that is the core of the current controversy. So if I'm right about this, what are we going to see going forward? Previously, we had patches that started with an excitingly large number of features and then shrank down when the tentative don't make it. Instead, we're going to see exactly the opposite. The next release being nearly empty until just before it goes to Ibokati, at which point the tentative will make their final go no go meetings and will pop in. But even so, expect the next couple of releases to be thin, barely better than bug fixes, since the main efforts are all going to be going into the 4.0 development branch, even items not strictly needed for 4.0, because you don't want to have to do twice the integration and testing work. Then, just before we think that one of these thin quarterly releases is about to go to Evocati, CIG's QA department will conclude that the 4.0 development branch is ready enough to commit to, and then, in the mother of all roadmap updates, that 3.xx release will completely disappear and be replaced with 4.0 and a list of features previously thought to be lost to the ages, and then pretty much the next day, go to Evocati. That's how little notice we are likely to get about 4.0. We'll learn about it just before the Ibakati release notes get leaked, which they inevitably seem to do. I think that these roadmap changes are designed precisely in order to have that be the case, but with the absolute certainty that when they finally say the words 4.0, then 4.0 it will certainly arrive. So why not just take the time to explain it that way? It's not like I had that hard of a time doing it, because I have less on the line. It's easy for me to be all about Grow up on trees and and not about I don't give a damn what you think you are entitled to when everything is on the line and you've been taking heat for such a long time it's a lot easier to respond with being pressed about what's the truth with you can't handle the truth and that is my admittedly speculative analysis of what is actually going on with these roadmap changes and then finally the required update on the ship giveaway currently we are at 27 percent of the membership goal and 49 percent of the subscriber goal to get the one lucky subscriber of their choice of the Anvil Liberator Ship Shipping Ship for shipping your ships, or the MISC Odyssey Long Duration Exploration Carrier. One entry per video, those 27 members as of this are entered automatically, and to top it all up, if they win, they get both of the ships. For non-members, just be a subscriber and comment using the secret word. And the secret word is your choice of any phrase said by Colonel Jessup in these clips. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Daniel Raymond for Ray's Guide.